In this video, we want to try to derive what is called the scaling property of the Dirac delta function. Uh, and it's, it's a simple enough equation. All we're saying is that if we have the Dirac delta function of some constant multiplied by our variable t, it's the same thing as the Dirac delta function of just t divided by the absolute value of the constant. So if a is positive here, it's going to be positive here. If it's negative here, it's still going to be positive there. And to try to derive that, let's go back to our basic definitions. Now remember what we derived in the previous videos in our series, which reminds me that I should emphasize the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Now what we saw in the last videos is that if we have say this expression f of t say times the direct delta function of t minus a dt that equals f of a. Now if we have the direct delta function of just delta t, so a is 0, like this, dt, that is f of 0. But now instead of the direct delta function of t, if we have a times t, what does this equal? So probably the best way to get a handle on that is to try a substitution. So we will say let um, tau, let that be equal to a times t. Now if we do that, dt, that will equal 1 over a times d tau, and t, that would just be tau divided by a. And t goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, then so will tau. So with our substitution, this integral up here will now look like this, f of t, that's f of tau over a, and the direct delta function, this of a t, that will be tau, and dt is 1 over a d tau, and the limits go from minus infinity to plus infinity. This is a constant, so we can just take it to the outside. Now, just to be clear, let's make certain that A is a positive quantity. So A is greater than 0. Now looking at this, this is just simply going to be f of 0. Because again, it's always going to be 0, except when tau equals 0. Tau is 0, so this will equal 1 over a f of 0. So that tells us this integral is 1 over a times f of 0. So let's write that in. And 
and we did that when this A is a positive quantity. Now we want to consider the case when A is less than zero. Um, so let's do it like this. So we'll say A equals minus B. B is always positive, so this will always give us a negative A. A is less than zero. Uh, so at that substitution, we will say let tau be equal to not A times T, but minus B times T. And let's consider the limits. T goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. Then tau, if T is minus infinity, tau will be plus infinity. And if T is plus infinity, tau will be minus infinity. And let's see. Um, dt that will be minus 1 over b d tau. And t that will be minus 1 over b times tau. We'll just put tau up here. Minus tau divided by b. So let's go back up to our integral. It is f of t. That will be f of tau divided by minus b. of a t, that will be, that's what tau is, a is now minus b, so then we have this, and dt, that is this, d tau, and let's make this bigger, And tau goes from plus infinity to minus infinity. Now this is a constant, so we can take it to the outside. Then we'll just have d tau. And then with a minus sign here, all that does then is change the limits of the integration. If we have the integral from, say, uh, a to b of dx with a minus sign, then that would be, of course, just the integral of dx from b to a. So here, with this negative sign, let's take it out then and change the limits. So it's like that. It just flips the, the limits around. Now, what's in the integral this, that's going to be f of 0. It's always going to be 0, except when this is not t, this is tau. It's always going to be 0, except when tau is 0. So you have 1 over b f of 0. Now remember, b 
B was chosen to always be positive to assure that negative B gives A less than 0. A equals minus B, or B itself is minus A, but A is less than 0. So this right here is going to be a positive A. So what we see here is that going back up to here, regardless of what, if A is positive, that's positive. If A is negative, this is still positive. So what we can say is just this. For all values of A. Now, Let's consider this step. F of 0 can be written like this. We'll equal the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of F of t. direct delta function of t dt. So let's write this up here in place of this. Then we have the integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of t direct delta function t. This is a constant. Let's take it to the inside. So you have 1 over a d delta t dt and get rid of it here. And Notice we have these two integrals are equal to each other. Let's write it down here so we have more room. We're saying the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of f of t direct delta function of a times t dt equals this integral, f of t, 1 over the absolute value of a, delta t, dt. I'm going to erase this. And let's consider what this means now. So if we have any arbitrary function f of t, pick a certain f, f of t, plug it into here too, these integrals will come up being equal. Now I'll take a different value of f of t, plug it in here and here, these integrals are equal. Take another value of f of t, plug it in here and here, the integrals turn out to be equal when you take their expressions. And this is true for any arbitrary value of f of t that we put into there, always being equal, then that will imply that what's inside of the integral sign is also equal, the integrands. So that would mean that implies that the direct delta function of a t equals 1 over the absolute value of a delta t. And that's what we set out to prove. And this is called the scaling property of the Dirac delta function. And we can use this to prove other properties of the Dirac delta function. We'll do that in some future videos.